Here's Brody Brazil. Let's talk about September and the rest of 2020 for the Oakland A's. Things really took some interesting twists in the last week and a half. Uh, we're now past the trade deadline, so that's been settled. Uh, the team going into this last weekend had missed a couple games due to protesting racial injustices in our country. And then at the end of this past weekend, went through their first COVID scare of the regular season. So a, a lot to digest, a lot to process, a lot to figure out moving forward for this team. And maybe a lot to worry about um, at this point, too. The injury to Marcus Simeon um, was something that was kind of under the radar with all of this. But think about your leadoff hitter, your shortstop, one of your team leaders. Um, the good news is it sounds like he's going to be okay, but we'll discuss that a little bit later on. So a lot of just interesting things all up in the air at the same time. So, yeah, maybe a lot to worry about. But at the same time, let's just take one step back. Let's have a deep breath. And let's look at the big picture here for this team that is having a great season to this point. A team that has created created a little bit of a cushion for themselves. They're positioned well for the playoffs. I understand nobody's qualified yet. It's not like that. I'm not assuring you anything. I'm just saying it could be a lot worse situation. They have they've created themselves some buffer and some insurance. And they're only being chased at this point in the American League West by the Houston Astros. Two teams from every division are going to get in to this 16-team playoff format in 2020. So all you have to do to get into the playoffs is finish top two in the division. And now looking at the West post-trade deadline and seeing who made what moves, I mean, it really does only shape up to be the A's and Astros in the West. But again, um, I digress a bit here to say that I understand we have about half the season, a little bit less than half the season still to play. And the last point here to make before I get into larger scale topics is that, yes, the A's are only going to be judged by what they can accomplish in the playoffs. For better or worse, they have set the bar that high, and that's what people are expecting of them to do something big in the postseason. All right, so eight points to make here. I'll begin with number one. Um, now that the A's have missed some games, a couple due to the protests and a couple due to the postponement after uh, the positive COVID result, um, yeah, they've got extra games to make up and not a lot of time left to do it. Now, when other teams had issues earlier in the season, you know, Major League Baseball could kind of pace it out, right? And even the Cardinals, who missed, missed a bunch of games, at least at that point, Major League Baseball and the Cardinals had time on their side. The A's now, halfway through the season, they don't have as much flexibility to fit in a doubleheader here, fit in an extra game there, take advantage of an off day that they were otherwise supposed to get. Those type of options aren't necessarily available. And I also worry a little bit here about fatigue into the playoff push, right? It's, it's one thing to have to make up all these games, but it's another thing to be playing so much baseball down the stretch that when it comes time for the postseason, will you have just played 34 games in 28 days? I mean, that's a lot. And I think there's even a week where the A's are slated to have three doubleheaders as I record this right now. So teams are not teams are not designed for that. One doubleheader in a single week is usually enough. And I don't care if it's seven or nine innings, playing two games in one day, it wears the players out. Uh, it could tax your bullpen potentially, and it also sets up where your rotation is going to need some help because pitchers operate on days on and days off. And when you need two starters to go on, on a same day and you have three of those double headers within a week, you can quickly see how it really makes you flex all the different options you have and, and really runs you short on pitching options at times. So yeah, that's my number one point. A bit of a worry about the amount of games to make up, and with time here dwindling in the regular season, not a lot of options and opportunities to make up these games. Second point I want to make here is the A's in the seven-inning doubleheader format. So think about this in the last a couple years, and this year included. When do the when do the A's typically play their most amazing baseball in the course of a game? Is it usually innings one through three? 
four through six or seven through nine, right? Like, especially in home games, they are always a late inning baseball team. Think about all the walk offs. Think about all the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning either comebacks or pushes that they make. Um, that's kind of what they're known for. And so to play this seven inning format, you know, it's weird to say for whatever reason, and, and I think the stats would even agree with this here in 2020, the A's offensively, they've been able to attack other teams' bullpens better than their starters. So you're making it a starter's game when you oppose, uh, you know, a, a team that's got a good, good starting pitcher that night. And on the flip side, maybe one of the A's stronger points, right, from their pitching standpoint this year has also been their bullpen. So you're making it more of a starter's game rather than a bullpen game. Uh, and that doesn't help the A's really on, on both sides of the table at this point. So are the A's actually a good seven-inning baseball team? I'm not saying they're a bad one. I'm just saying that, that typically later in games suits them better than earlier in games. Third point to make here is what kind of layoff effects are we about to see from the Oakland A's when they in fact resume playing on Friday? Now, they will have just played only on the previous Saturday. So six total days off, and they played a doubleheader on that day. They were off the two prior days before that. So it's going to be more than a week's time playing only on one day. And baseball players are creatures of routine and habit, and it's not like right now they're able to get into a batting cage. They've been stuck in Houston. They've had to isolate. These guys have had to stay dormant, essentially. So no activities at all. What exactly can we expect in that first series against the Padres? Right? Like, there, there legitimately could be a little bit of rust to shake off. And I'm not saying the A's won't get it back, but to be taken out of your rhythm completely. I know there's a, there is a benefit of rest, but in baseball, there's probably more concern about the rust. All right, uh, the fourth point I want to make here, having the COVID scare like they just did. I'm curious how that affects this team moving forward and not not necessarily in a direct way. Not in not in the way that you're going to observe something different. You might see these guys taking more precautions, more face masks, more distancing. I mean, I, I think they were already doing a pretty well enough job as it was. And I think players would tell you, as they did on a regular basis, that they all felt quite safe. They all felt each teammate was being responsible for the fellow man. And I, I like to see it in these times. I really did like to see that that responsibility that they showed as a group. But it kind of makes you wonder what's the what's the conscious and subconscious effect of going through one of these scares? Because you can instantly see how fast just one positive test result changes the whole dynamic of your team, your season, your schedule, the task ahead. Uh, let's just hope that there's there's no more talk of this there's no more reason of talk of this in the rest of the season that the A's had this one incident be done move on and keep everybody healthy and yeah for that reason mostly to keep everybody healthy but also so this group doesn't have to go through something daunting and unnecessary fifth point to make here um I am a bit concerned about the rotation already now I talked about the schedule ahead double headers I imagine there's going to have to be a bullpen game or two down the line, even with the acquisition of Mike Miner. And we should talk about that. Um, at the trade deadline, the A's did get a pitcher. Maybe not the one that was on everybody's radar. And maybe not the one who was having the greatest 2020. 0-5, uh, a four-something ERA. Um, I, I think some might have looked at the deal initially and said, I'm not sure what's going on there. But the depth that he can bring this team... And the option as a starter, as a reliever, he's already said he'll do whatever it takes. They're going to need that type of pitcher for the September schedule-wise that they're about to have. And you could take it back to last year, Homer Bailey, Tanner Roark. When the A's acquired those two pitchers, it was kind of the same scenario. Veterans with a track record maybe haven't been coming off their best success, but you know what they're capable of, and you're hoping that a change of scenery... And some new opportunity might be just what the A's needed, might be just what the doctor ordered 
uh, in this case for Mike Miner. And yeah, I, I going back to the the existing rotation, I'm a bit worried. At the beginning of this year, we thought it was going to be uh, by far their strongest point on the team. And it's turned out to be good. They've gone through some rough patches. I am a bit concerned about Frankie Montas. It's, it's hard not to correlate the injury that he had and the, the start that he missed with the struggles he's had since then. I think you've seen Fires and Manaya have uh, bits and pieces of struggling here. But again, the, the part about it is you know what they're capable of. And so it's not a sense of can this person be something completely different. You're not, you're not asking that. And that's where the confidence lies, to be honest with you. You're asking these players to get back to what you know they're capable of. And I know, you know fans ultimately always expect like a, a switch to be flipped, like, one day it all changes. I don't think it happens like that. I do. Th- I do think you can see a trend happening. I do think you can see those two particularly finding more success. Um, but again, this is this is a group effort, and they're going to be tested. The rotation is here down the stretch. All right, sixth point to make here. I don't think we've yet to see one player on the A's or even a collection of players have an unbelievable stretch. Does that make sense? Like we've seen a, a a player have a great month of August, like Stephen Piscotti, uh, one of the RBI leaders. And I did miss a couple games at the end, but one of the RBI leaders in the American League in August. We saw Loriano have a real hot streak. We saw Chapman have a few games of, of home runs here and there, but we haven't seen somebody go on an unbelievable, ridiculous tear for the A's. And, and again, going back to the the Fires and Manaya comment I just made. You know some hitters on the A's especially are completely capable of that. You know they have the ability to go on some tremendous run, but we haven't seen it. We also haven't seen even the group go on some ridiculous run. Now, I know they won nine in a row, um, but even then, I'm not sure you would look at all those victories and say, oh, those were all gimmies, like the A's just ran away with it. They found ways to win during that streak. So I'm still wondering if and when we're going to see this team hit on all cylinders. I believe it's possible. I just don't believe we've seen it yet. And maybe that's maybe that's a really good thing, right? You don't want to peak halfway through your year. You definitely don't want to peak in the first half. You'd rather peak in the second half, to be honest. In a 60-game season, I think you'd, you'd like to start peaking around game 54, if that makes any sense. Start peaking. Not finish peaking. Start peaking at 54. All right, number seven, I want to focus directly in on Marcus Semien, uh, who had some soreness on his left side, had the MRI. Apparently, everything's okay. Apparently, this is an injury that he's gone through and played through before. Um, but I think that was kind of like the COVID situation. That was also a scare that this team had to deal with. Didn't play the second game of, of Saturday's doubleheader. And yeah, Matt Chapman can play shortstop. Great. It was fun. It was, it was unique to see him in that one game, but I I don't want to see more of it. I don't want to see the A's have to use other options. Knock on wood, wherever wherever there's wood, but you don't want to see the A's have to deal all of a sudden with a major injury, multiple injuries. They've had a fortunate season in that way. And a guy like Marcus, there are options. Again, there are options to play short. There are leadoff options for this team. I'd really rather not go down that road than the best option, right? So I think it it puts that fear into your mind. What would this be like if Marcus was out or couldn't play through this? And let's hope that when he does resume baseball activities in a couple days, that everything's going to be fine enough. Realize it's probably not going to be perfect yet, but that he can play through it and, and find some success. Nothing can really replace the pillar players on your team. Fair enough. All right, and then the last point to make here, it's kind of what I said at the beginning of this this recording, is that the A's are only going to be judged by what they do in the playoffs. And that's a hard it's a hard scenario for any sports team, honestly. Because you can have a great regular season, even a shortened one like this with all the extra adversity, but unless you actually come through to some extent when it matters most... Uh, what's the saying? To to whom much is given, much is expected. 
uh, the A's have put themselves in this scenario. Being a playoff team each of the last two years, 97 wins each of the last two years, and then coming quite short in those wild card games. Now, we know there's not going to be a wild card game this year, right, because of the different format. It's a three game series. Also, this. What about the neutral sites we're talking about for, for baseball's postseason? If it is, in fact, Los Angeles for the American League and Texas stadiums for the National League. So all of a sudden, does it even make a difference if the A's win the West? Long as you're one of the two top teams, you're guaranteed a playoff spot. And so long as you're playing all your games in somebody else's stadium, what does it even matter? That's interesting, right? You think about you think about the whole different ball game here. What, what does the rest of September even matter then for the A's? So long as they maintain their lead, play well enough, uh, they don't have to go on a first half like they had at one point, what, 20 wins, 10 losses, 20 and 10, 30 games in. I think that's what they were. You don't have to have another 20 win second half. You've, you've built yourself that insurance. But you do want to be playing good baseball going into the playoffs, right? You don't want to back your way in. You don't want to feel like you have to find something that you lost all over again. But you you want to make that balance of understanding that you don't need, you know, if you're going to win the race, or in this, in this case, get into the playoffs in, in a race, what's the difference if you get in by 15 games or 10 games? So it's a hard, hard thing to balance. You want to pace, but you don't want to fall off and lose your edge. I mean, I am never saying don't win every game you can. Don't get every hit you can. Don't get every strikeout you can. I'm just saying to know that the pressure at this point, because you're not going to be judged on the regular season, the pressure at this point is totally different than the pressure that is about to be at a deeper point in the playoffs. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the 2020 Oakland A's. This has been an interesting season. And as much as I'll talk about strategy of baseball like I just did, I'll tell you what the number one thing I want for everybody involved is that they can all just stay healthy.